Huh. Well, that one was a bit misleading. I was so super before, now I'm just a mess. Hello, 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 and welcome back to another episode here on the Hermitcraft server with me, ZF. I've got a confession. I don't drink potions. Do you? Is it just me? I'm, I rarely drink a potion, right? Sure, I'll have a, an occasional fire resistance potion once in a while, but who doesn't? Who doesn't, eh? But just day to day, I'm not, I'm not touching a potion. I'm not supping on a little colourful liquid in a glass bottle. I, I, I just don't do it, and I tell you the reason why. They're too complicated. Brewing is such a complicated procedure that I just can't remember all the ingredients and, and all of the ways to mix them together into these delightful brews. And that's a real shame because there's some really good, strong, powerful potions that we could be guzzling down absolutely every day of the week to help us get our job done quicker. So today, we're going to be making the cleverest potion brewing system ever. Okay, so this thing is going to be big. It's going to be very, very big. It's basically going to be a computer, pretty much. It's going to be a brewing system computer. Uh, and quite honestly, I don't even know what a computer is. Computer. Noun. An electronic device for storing and processing data, typically in binary form, according to instructions given to it in a variable program. Aha, okay, yes, yeah, so I still do not know what a computer is. But that part we can figure out later. Um, now we've got to figure out exactly where we want to put this thing. And I'm here in my very dry aquarium at the moment. Uh, this whole area here is one day going to become an aquarium, except, however, it is now not. I have decided this is the perfect location. Slap bang, in the middle, right here, we are going to be building... Um, our lovely brewing system, and it's going to have the aquarium go all the way around the edge, maybe over the top a little, maybe under the bottom a little bit, but ultimately, um, we're going to be in the very centre of an aquarium here, and hey, it's perfect, because we can reuse the water from the aquarium to brew the potions with, that's disgusting because of fish poo. So seeing how this thing is going to be pretty big, um, the, yeah, the farming uh, dome is right there, this thing's probably got to be about 20 blocks tall, this is only like two, no, it's more than that, but it's very, very short, um, it's also going to be about 40 by 40, and I've measured it out. We do have plenty of room with a good amount on either side for the little fishies to live. Don't you worry, fishies. Um, we're not going to be we're not going to be uh, replacing your home with uh, a brewing tank. Although maybe we could make them the same thing again. No, because of the fish poo. I forgot. But we're going to have to do a little bit of digging just down here, and uh, hopefully we don't come across um, a big cave. Also, oh no, well, no, actually no, hopefully, hopefully we do come across a big cave, hopefully we come across a perfectly rectangular 40 by 40 cave, that, that would be very nice, fingers crossed just below here, no, th 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 there was not, oh actually never mind, there was a cave under there after all, it was just under a few thousand stone blocks, no big deal, ouch, let's jump down and start looking into the brewing stuff, alright, because I, I don't want to learn how to make all the different combinations of potions. I want to learn how to make all the different combinations of potions, then painstakingly figure out how to get redstone to make all the combinations of potions so that I can unlearn how to make all the combinations of potions again, right? That's, uh, see, my thinking is smart. It's clever. So potion brewing systems. We need to work out what inputs we need to put in so that we know what the redstone is going to be, and also we need to know what outputs we want as well. So we're going to focus on inputs. We know the output is just a, a potion, um, and uh, obviously in a certain order, Order. Water bottles first. You can have one, two, or three being brewed. Though honestly, I have no idea why you'd want to brew less than three. You'd be a fool to do such a thing, but we're going to allow the computer to allow it. Why not? Then you've got your nether wart, which honestly all of them have, except for one stupid little insignificant potion. I think, what is it, weakness? Oh, that's my weakness, the fact that it's the only one not to use nether wart. Then you've got all the main ingredients, the flavours of all the different potions. I think there's like 15 of these things. I've not even got all of them, so I've just represented them with a bunch of uh, dispensers there. Then we've got an optional step of maybe inverting some of them. You can invert some potions and not others. Um, and the inverted ones become potions new of themselves as well. So technically, you know, just because there's only like 15 ingredients, there's actually more when you invert some of them um, as well. And that's the only way to get them. The next stage is like mega powerizing, spicing them up a little bit. Redstone or glowstone you can add. Or sometimes 
both. <laughs> this is the thing. Some potions allow you to add redstone um, only, and I, I think that extends the time of the potion. Other potions only allow you to add glowstone, which adds strength to the potion. Some of them allow you to add glowstone and then redstone, but not all of them. It's a bit of a weird mix. So again, that is going to be a major component. Computer, wherever you're listening, that you're going to need to take into account. And the final optional step, you can either leave the potion blank and you can just drink it like a drink, or you can add gunpowder to make it throwable. Ha-cha-cha, -cha, my bow. Or you can add dragon's breath, which I've not got, so I'm representing it with dragon face um, to make it... Uh, a lingering potion so that it lingers like a big stinky... Anyway, so we want the computer to be choosing whether to add or not add um, a whole selection of all of these things to make our desired potion, right? So our inputs, we just want to be like, for this, we just want to be, do we want one, two or three uh, potions out of this? It's probably going to be three all the time. I can't see why not. Um, this one, we don't want to... We, we want to just be able to know that that's going to go through unless... The potion that we pick here doesn't need it. If we choose the potion, uh, the weakness potion here, this... No, 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 no. Skip this step, computer, please. Thank you. Um, obviously, one, whichever one of these, we need to tell it which potion we want. Um, this one is also going to need to happen automatically. If we tell it we want, uh, like, a poison potion, I think we need to make a health potion and then invert it with this one. Um, we're also going to need to say whether we want it um, extended or stronger. But again, I want to make sure that if we've selected a potion that like instant health, you can't extend the time on an instant health potion. That would be crazy because it's instant. You can't extend instantness. That would, can you? Well, you probably, you kind of get, but you can't in this game. So we want to make sure that we're only able to select these dependent on the potion that we have chosen. Um, and then also, of course, if we've just added dragon breath you have to make it a splash potion first um so we just want to know that it's either none of these just this or this one then this one duck oh oh i hit you right in the face i'm so sorry i apologize i actually didn't i managed to hit a perfect bullseye it was a bullseye <laughs> don't rewind that it was perfectly in the bullseye um we're going to be using these target blocks to help make the computer's life that a little bit easier because we're able to have this main power line going down the back like this with um, delays in between each section because obviously we need to put the water bottles in first, then we need to put this in, then we need to put this in. I've put it, put it in a nice order here of exactly uh, when the ingredients need to go in. Uh, so we've got the spacings between those. But yeah, ultimately, one big power line. Currently, it's doing nothing. But these little uh, target blocks under here, what we can do... If we do stuff like this, we can move them up. And now you can see that they have connected to the main line. They're getting powered and then they will power the dispenser next to it. So this is a really cool, easy way of basically being able to like add certain things. So we could be like this one on, this one on, uh, this one on, maybe uh, that one as well. And you can see that none of them are going to get powered other than the very specific view that we have selected. But in this instance, we don't want to be the ones to make these pistons go up. We want the computer to be doing it. So that's where the complicated redstone is going to come in to make sure that um, just the right pistons that the computer thinks are appropriate are up and the rest are down from our inputs. So let's start quickly looking at our wonderful inputs. Ta -da! We've got them and they're working already as well. I've actually borrowed some redstone that I made before. This is the same redstone that we actually used uh, when we created the enchanting area. Um, you remember the three, whether it's three, two or one uh, different bits of lapis. So pretty much the same stuff you can see down here. And um, we've got our button uh, that goes through monostable circuit to just make a really short little pulse. That goes into this little loop thing here, which is either, what is it? Power 14, power 9, power 2, and then back to power 14 again. It basically lets us step through three different lengths of power signal. Um, so we can have one potion, two potion, or three potion. All three are selected right now. We hit the button. Only two potions are selected. We hit it again. Only one potion selected. Hit it one more time. All three are selected again. And we can do exactly the same thing with our nothing plus splash or plus dragon breath, which again, I've not renamed that yet. So boom, we've got nothing this way around. Oh, it kind of goes the wrong way, sort of. But this is if we wanted dragon breath because you need splash first. So it needs to do both splash, then dragon breath. One more brings it down to just splash. One more brings it down to nothing at all. Thank you very much. We will ignore all of this stuff. This one, however, is slightly more different because 
We don't want to add both of these. You can never add both at the same time. You have to pick one or the other. Some potions only let you do one. Some potions only let you do the other. Some let you choose both, but you can only pick one. So um, I've had to do this in a slightly different way. Boom, you can see we've chosen redstone now. Boom, you can see we've chosen glowstone. So as these two are kind of like additive, these ones are just singular. It's just one, just two, or just slot three. So how I managed to do this one, I don't really know. Um, it's this mess. We've gone ahead and gotten three droppers here and a and a hopper just to 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 um, skip the thing. So uh, we basically want the item to sit in either hopper one, ho not hopper, dropper one, dropper two, or dropper three. And once it goes through, go straight back to dropper one again. Um, and we've basically got this uh, repeater here that's going to um, go into this dropper, powering all three of them. Which yeah, there's some weird ordering issues there um but this redstone dust also powers this top one i'm not going to go through it all exactly how it works because honestly i don't really fully know um i extended the redstone line over here the buttons behind this one i extended it over here just so that all the lights flash um just so that you can't really see the the mess in the middle so when you push it because the buttons are actually lighting up the lamp here as well i just want all the lights to go on whilst the machine is is active and then once the button goes off uh, yeah, then it's it shows us which one we've actually decided to land on. So that is our three different inputs over there. All one button each. Very, very nice. Then we have our 15 different buttons down here. Every single one we can decide to make a unique potion type. So we're not worrying about whether we put wart in or not. We're not worrying about whether we put a fermented spider eye in or not to invert it. That doesn't matter. We're only going to select the final potion output and the computer is going to work the rest of that out along with these three other selections as well but let's take a little bit of a break from the redstoney stuff and do a little bit more fun physics -y based things instead so uh, in typical zaraf stupid unefficient fashion this whole massive contraption is just going to have one one single brewing stand and that is it. We're not going for efficiency here. We're going th for ease via overcomplication. <laughs> That's pretty much how I roll. So um, yeah, one single brewing stand. And uh, of course we can add hoppers on the, on the top to give the main ingredients like so. Sides there to give the uh, the bottles, the water bottles will go in by the sides. Main ingredient going via the top. I don't remember the magma powder, but again, we're just gonna add a whole stack of that um, anyway, because yeah, over a thousand potions with a stack of 64 of that, no problem at all. But uh, yeah, how are we gonna get the ingredients that the computer decides need to go in into this system? Well, if you remember back to this episode, <laughs> Remember that we found a way to fling items pretty far for the RGB mini game, the catch game. We had to run and jump about and catch all the blocks. Um, if you didn't watch that episode, you totally should because that's one of my favorite mini games um, I've ever made. But yes, we worked out that you could get a long water shoot like this with uh, some bubbles at the end. There's all the soul sand down there creating three blocks of bubbles. Um, and when you chuck water, uh, chuck water in, when you chuck items in, so if we just chuck a bit of stone in now and run all the way down to the very end, you'll see fling. It got flung. It got all the horizontal power that way. And then this bit of water um, pushed it up as well. So it flew all the way over here. It might have even gone slightly further um, if that glass hadn't been in the way. And that's great. But uh, yeah, a little bit cumbersome. I went back to the drawing board and I found out and I think we all knew it at the time, you can get horizontal movement with just a just a little piston sticky sticky buffer like this. So basically, I've got my, my lifter is exactly the same, but all of my horizontal power comes from this one uh, slime block pusher here, which, as you can see, is obviously a lot more uh, minimal. And um, yeah, if we line these up around the top of this sort of middle tier rim area, I think we can fling things nicely all the way down into the hoppers. So I've not measured this. Not all of them, thanks. Let's just do one at a time. Um, I've not measured this, but let's see exactly where this stone block goes. So ready? Haja! It flows quite far. Oh, that looked good. That looked like it went into the middle one. Is that what we want? Did it? It didn't. Okay. Okay. So, wow. So it actually went over this hopper and landed in this one. My goodness me. That's kind of crazy. I didn't think that. If we put this hopper up one more, I wonder what happens then. Another launch. Pleh and pleh. And that had to go in the top hopper. The topper. It did. It did. Okay, so we could raise this up one. We could lower that down, except we can't 
because I believe we're already encroaching on the redstone down here. I want to keep everything quite um, spacious. So what about... I don't really want two hoppers up there. Um, Minecart hopper saves the day, I think. I hope. I don't know. Let's try and see what happens. Uh, let's put some redstone in. Um, take a little bit of a step back. Hopefully that catches things. These things are like vacuum cleaners. These things suck. Like, the items can be, like, all the way over here, and this thing will just go, <laughs> mine, thank you. So let's see exactly what it does. We can get a good uh, flow. Is this not what? Is this too long? Have I made my line too long? Oh, my good, embarrassed. Uh, let me get, <laughs> let me get a repeater. Let's go, boom. There it flies. It looked like it went kind of a little bit far over. Where'd it go? Oh, it did go in the top one. And it went all the way through because it's an ingredient. Okay, brilliant. So that does definitely work. That helped catch it pretty high up um, with hopefully a little bit more certainty than just, just a regular hopper. Thank you very much, minecart. Now we're up in the ante even more. Redstone dust, slime block, a uh, ball, and a uh, diamond. We've got three and we're going to use the little uh, curve trick. So now this water, the water in the middle is just going to go straight because it is straight. Um, but these, we can actually curve them slightly by having the water flowing into this top block over here. And the reverse happening over on this side. I think it does matter where we put this. Like, uh, if we put the diamond, like, this side of the block, obviously it's got to travel further across this water source first. And obviously if we put it over here, then it has to travel less of it. So I'm not entirely sure the best uh, places, but hopefully these will all go in with our big, catchy, cleaner, vacuum cleaner thingy. Um, let's see what happens. Boom. And doosh, 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 doosh. They all went in. Okay, great. Um, let me try a new test now where we do two things at once. We put a slide block in that corner. S excuse me. We put a slide block. Fine. Slide ball in that corner. Soul, sand, in that corner, items. Okay, boom. And let's see exactly what happens to both. Maybe they both go in. Maybe it doesn't actually matter um, where the item appears on the block. So, uh, boom. Oh, it does matter, but I forgot which way round I put them. It was the outside. So if I put it here and it has further to travel, um, it just didn't go well enough. So uh, let's try it again. And this shouldn't land in the thing. It's just going to fly past yet and land exactly in the same spot again. Whereas if we do put it on the inside of the track like that, then that is fine and it should all work and just fly straight in. Whew. All right, we've got to check out exactly what it looks like from down here because you can't see any of that really. Look how hidden it is. And then can you imagine this from all the walls as well? I don't know. Right, okay. When we put a block under here, it will send an update up and uh, trigger and we can see exactly what it looks like. 3D1, place. Okay, there it is. Oh, that's some that's some throwage. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Can you imagine it going bam, 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 all the way around the edge of the room? Okay, this thing, this thing is gonna look just as cool, probably cooler than I was hoping it to look. Okay, let's let's carry on adding some more of these. Nine swoopers are done. That's their official name now, by the way. They're swoopers. And uh, I could do three more just along this front bit here to make a grand total of 12 swoopers. But you know what? I'm thinking we can probably get away with just the nine and then we can allow this side to be a big entrance because obviously this is a lot lower down. So we're going to need like a big grand staircase that goes all the way down to uh, this floor down here. But uh, before we launch all nine of them, which honestly I've tested it, it looks incredible. Um, let me quickly just run through the rest of the plan of what the computer needs to do. We're almost there. It's surprisingly not that much more complicated. Quick rundown of what we're going to be doing um, in a later episode and then we'll see the swoops. So uh, what we've got is our 15 different potions along here. I've got fire resistance, healing, swiftness, and then they're the only ones I had to hand. All of the other potions would be available and they are all one button push. So uh, I believe it's like the, the poison one. Um, oh no, the harming. Let's use the harming one. The harming one is just a healing um, turned bad with it a fermented spider eye. So we will have a separate one for harming. And when we push that, it will make a healing potion and then also invert it as well. Whereas this one just will just make the healing and won't have the inverted. Um, so that's how we're going to deal with all of those. The button presses for these themselves are going to trigger the grand uh, line that goes all the way around the edge. Remember the, the target blocks like this. Every single one of these buttons will t trigger the same trigger line, but it'll also trigger its own individual uh, ingredient as well, um, or ingredients as some of them are. Um, the water bottles here, for instance, we've selected two at the moment. So the 
uh, target blocks will kind of look like this. Two of them will be down. One of them won't be. So our grand line will trigger two of them. Water, but water, not a water bucket. Water bottle, water bottle, um, but not the other one. Um, over here, for instance, we've got the redstone. So plus the extended time selected. So this uh, target block will be down and not this one. Um, if we ever had it on this one, that's just nothing anyway. So we don't need a target block or anything for that because it's always off. But it's just nice to be able to have the light on. So if we switched it to glowstone, of course, these would be reversed. So it would look something like that, which now triggers this dispenser and not this one. And obviously this is the one that would have glowstone dust all in the middle. Uh, this one, everything is on. We want it to be splashed. And then we also want it to be um, lingered as well, which of course means just both of these are down. One last thing, um, like I said before, not all the potions can have... Um, all of the potency and time added to them. So, uh, for instance, the, the instant healing potion, again, we cannot add time to this. So, um, in this current scenario, we have time selected, um, and it is going to spit out a redstone dust. So, to prevent that, what I want to do, um, in front of all the ones that cannot have time added to them, um, in the floor here, I want to be able to pop something up that's basically like, what well, only on the ones that you can't have it on. So, Maybe uh, this one's fine, uh, this one's fine. Um, fire resistance I, we know is fine as well, so that doesn't need it. But maybe on these these four potions, things pop up when time is selected. So we also need another way of detecting which one we've got here. So if we switched it and went to potency, for instance, um, all of these ones would swap, but these ones would go down instead. And they'd be like, no, we can't have um, the potency added to us. And then, of course, there's some that allow both. So they'll never have a warning come up. But I think that's a really good way of being able to just be like, like, oh, I, I'd come here and I want to hit swiftness. But it's like, oh, wait, I've got to change this setting first. Let me let me switch that over to what I want. And then boom, all of that would be OK. And then I'd be like, yeah, OK, that allows me to push it. It's basically just a way of um, not letting you push the button or just just giving you a little warning of not pushing the button uh, if something bad is going to happen. But now let's load up all nine and have a fling off. Okay, here goes. We place a block. Boom. And we watch. There's the flings. There's the flings. There's the flings. <laughs> Isn't that the coolest thing you've ever seen? Look, all nine blocks went in the middle one. That is so cool. They fling from so far away. I want to do it again. That looks so cool. They go so far. I don't know why that pleases me so much, but of course they will be um, then like the water bu bottles, not buckets, water bottles. They will be the ingredients, um, however many from here. They will be the, the time and potency or the this, the gunpowder and the, the dragon's breath and stuff, depending on what is selected. Um, we'll might have to share because uh, there's obviously nine, whereas there's going to be like three plus 15 plus two plus two again different items coming through but that's okay we can work all of that out we've got plenty of room um to work out all of the the spacing and everything but that my friends is uh the first episode hopefully we'll finish it up um the next time we work on this project but honestly this is going to be pretty cool we're going to glass up have i got any glass? yeah we're going to glass up the whole thing use quartz and glass but i really want to try and make every single part of this see through um, because that is going to go back and tie into perfectly our aquarium. Fishies, I want you to be able to swim through the redstone. I want you to go absolutely everywhere possible. Are you excited about that? You look pretty excited. We're going to make your tank so big. It's going to have pistons and redstone in it and all sorts of goodies for you to swim around. It's going to be cool. <laughs> it's going to look almost like a, like a supervillain lair or something when it's all complete. I mean, I'm not exactly a villain. But uh, I'm certainly not opposed to uh, their sense of interior design. <laughs> it always looks pretty cool. But anyway, that is going to be it for today's episode. Thank you so very much for watching. I hope you learned something today. I hope you've got some ideas as well. If you do, let me know down in the comments of um, other ways that I can improve this and other bits I could add. And of course, a massive, massive thank you to my wonderful patrons whose names are all over the screen right now. These people have helped to make this episode possible by supporting the channel, supporting me. I love you all. Until the next time, a good, a bye.